Greetings detectives, Mrs. McKay here and we are on clue 4 of case 4. Case 4 is sequence scenarios and our learning target clue is I can represent a geometric sequence with a recursive equation or an explicit equation and use each equation to find the nth term. Now this is going to be very similar to what we did in our last video which was understanding arithmetic sequences. Now we're going to work on creating equations for geometric sequences. So let's first remember that a geometric sequence is when we multiply each term by the same number. Okay, and we're going to use terminology just like we did with arithmetic sequences and we're going to use the letter G to represent a geometric sequence. The first term of a geometric sequence will be G sub 1. All the remaining terms would be G sub 2, G sub 3, G sub 4, and so on. And if we are going to pick any term, um, we say the nth term, that's what we use when we're creating a generic formula. We say G sub n. And of course the previous term is going to be the term right in front of G sub n or the nth term, so that would be G sub n minus 1. And the last thing that we need to know is we need to understand that that number that we use to multiply each term by is called a common ratio and we just use the letter R to represent the common ratio. So those are all of the different parts that we'll use as we create our formulas. Now, I want to remind you of a few years ago of uh, sort of a phenomenon that happened on Facebook and Twitter and it was called the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. So why don't you go ahead and watch this little clip. Now just to remind you, the Ice Bucket Challenge was um, had some rules and to take part in the challenge the participants would film themselves pouring a bucket of ice water on their head. Once they've taken that plunge, then they call out three friends to take on the challenge and then they upload the video to social media or they donate $100 to the ALS Foundation. Now many people donated money and did the Ice Bucket Challenge, but the thing that I want us to talk about is how many people could there have been because that was really a sequence, a geometric sequence. and. Um, and let's just sort of fill in this table. So we've got um, the round of call outs. So for the first round, we'll call that term one. It's going to be the first term. And th that one person who did the call out, um, they called out three other people, right? So, so here I am, I dump the water on my head and I call out three, I challenge three other people. So my first term is three. And then the next round of call outs, um, if all those three people were going to um, do the ice bucket challenge, then each one of those three people would call out three people and so then there would be nine total ice bucket challenges. And then on the third term, uh, the third round, then those nine people would call out three other people and that that would be a total of 27 ice bucket challenges. So I think you can see what I'm doing is I'm just creating a sequence, right? So I've got um, three, nine, 27, 81 would be my fourth term in my sequence. And now we're going to start trying to figure out what the fifth term would be and what the tenth term would be. 
So in this situation, my callout, so my round of callouts, matches the number of my term. I could have had a zero term if I wanted, but I decided not to. So this is a geometric sequence. And what is my common ratio? Meaning, what is the number that I'm multiplying each term by? So if I started with a 3, I multiplied 3 by 3, didn't I? And then on my second term, I multiplied that term by 3. And my 27, which was my third term, I multiplied by 3 to get 81. So my common ratio is 3, isn't it? I'm multiplying each term by 3 to get the next term. So let's see if we can figure out how many challenges were completed on the fifth round. So if my fourth round was 81, then I would just have to multiply 81 by 3 to get my fifth term. So what is it? It's 243, isn't it? So what we just did was we just used a recursive equation. Remember, recursive equations are dependent on the term before it. So we have to know what the previous term is to be able to figure out what that term is the next term. So let's skip down to the bottom here and let's go ahead and write our recursive equation. So a recursive, to find the recursive equation to help, will always help me find the very next term. So if I'm wanting to find g sub n, so some term, then I have to figure out what the previous term was, which is g sub n minus 1 and I multiply it by the common ratio. So if I wanted to find the fifth term, g sub 5, that's going to be the term g 5 minus 1, which is really just g 4, times my common ratio. So now I just have to say that g the fifth term, g sub 5, is equal to g sub 4, and the fourth term is 1, 2, 3, 4, 81, so 81 times my common ratio, which is 3, and 81 times 3 is equal to 243. So just like with our um, geometric sequence, we would always take the previous term, I'm sorry, with our arithmetic sequence, we would always take the previous term and add to it the common difference with recursive equations with geometrics, we take the previous term and we multiply it by the common ratio. So that's our recursive equation. It's pretty simple to remember. An explicit equation is a little bit trickier and the explicit equation with the explicit equation we are finding the exact term a very specific term so let's take a look and see if we can figure out how we could find the tenth round now we could do that by finding out the sixth round multiplying by three then the seventh round multiply by three the eighth round the ninth round and then we would get to the tenth round but can we figure out a faster way to do this well let's think about it what did we do we took, we started with our first term. We started with our first term, which happened to be 3, right? We started with our first term. And how did we get to our second term? Well, we took our first term and we multiplied it by our common ratio, which was 3, right? So to get to our second term, we multiplied our first term which was 3, times our common ratio, okay? And it was just our common ratio one time. Then to get to the third term, 
to get to our third term right here, we took our, we started with 3, and we multiplied it by our common ratio. How many times? Well, we multiplied the 3 times 3 once, 2 times, so r to the second power. Right? And then to get to our fourth term, we started with 3, and we multiplied it by our common ratio, 1, 2, 3 times. So each time we multiplied our starting term by our common ratio, and our common ratio was multiplied a certain number of times. How many times was it? was it multiplied? Well, it was multiplied by itself one less time than the number of the term, just like we were doing with our arithmetics. So let's go ahead and create this equation. If we want to find g sub n, we're going to take g 1 sub 1, we're going to take the first term, we're going to multiply it by the common ratio, and the common ratio is going to be to the power of n minus 1. So that means that if I wanted to find g sub 10, I would have to take my first term and multiply it by r to the 10 minus 1, which would be the ninth power. And now I just have to figure out what my g sub 1 is and my and my r is. Well, my g sub 1 is 3, so to get to g sub 10, to get to my 10th term, I'm going to take my first term, which is 3. I'm going to multiply it by r, which happens to also be 3, and I'm going to do it to the 10 minus 1 power, which would be 9. Now, that's still a little tricky, so that's when I pull out my calculator. And I say, hmm, I want to multiply 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. I got to do it 9 times, right? Well, this is kind of right. I'm kind of getting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 times 3 times 3. There's time 3 to the ninth power. Well, that's a lot of work. Let me show you another way to do it. If you have a scientific calculator, you can do 3, x to the y power, and do you see the little carrot up there? I say I want to do it to the ninth power, and I get 19,683. 19, so I now know, I now know that 3 to the ninth power is 19,693, right? 83. And I'm going to multiply that times 3. Times 3. 59,049. 59,049. Well, what does that tell me? That tells me that on the 10th round of callouts, there were 59,049 ice bucket challenges. That is a geometric sequence. Now, you're going to have to come back so that we can do a few more practices just so that you feel comfortable with it. All right, so go ahead and stop this video. And um, actually, before you do that, let's go ahead and fill in the rest of this know this because this is important. This is this is the important thing. We have gn equals explicit is gn equals g sub 1 r to the n minus 1 power, and that's a minus, and g sub n for recursive is equal to g sub n minus 1, meaning the previous term, times r. All right, now let's do some practices, so come back and do the next video with me.